Okay, so at this point, we want to move along and define the masses. So we've finished the elements, finished the fixities, defined the masses, and we wrote out here a little bit that we're going to use ASC 7, and for interest of time, we're going to use 1,200 kips per floor. And all we need to do here is convert the 1,200 kips per floor to units of mass rather than units of weight. So we'll do our conversion factor here and get 3.11 as the units of mass, and that's in kip second squared per inch. So now what we need to do, our SAP model knows all the stiffnesses. Element stiffnesses are done. Foundation fixities stiffnesses are done. Now what we need to do is we need to assign the masses to each floor. Now we can take the masses for each floor and distribute them to every joint at each floor. Or for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to assign it to the left node at each floor. And we're going to assign 3.11. And we're going to use the local one axis direction because that's the x direction. And then also we're just going to put it in all of the directions. Um, just again to be safe, similar to how we did the modification factors um, so that we don't have to worry about um, which direction to which. Actually, maybe I changed my mind. I'm going to put zero for the third axis direction and not put vertical mass on there because that might cause some, um, some modes that are really high frequency and things like that. And I'll just avoid that because really we need lateral um, masses in this model. So we'll hit OK there, and then it's going to show the masses. So it showed there that we applied 3.11 in both directions. Really, we only need the mass in the x direction. Um, but if we put it in the y direction, it's not really going to hurt anything because we really don't care anything about the y direction anyway. So now what we need to do is we need to assign slab constraints. And the reason for this is because the model currently only has the beams in it. And there's a slab there that the model doesn't know about. And what the slab does is it constrains all of the nodes together along a floor. So I've selected all the nodes here on floor one. And I'm going to assign a constraint to this. And that basically reflects the, the fact that a slab's there, and the slab is not going to let those nodes move with respect to one another. They all have to move together. Now, this is a bit important for a 2D frame, but it's not as important as for a 3D frame. For a 3D frame, um, it's more important that we enforce this slab constraint. So we're going to go here and go to an equal constraint. So we're assigning a constraint, and it's called equal, which means we get equal displacement. We're going to call this one floor two. And we're only going to restrain, or constrain, not restrain, but constrain translation in the x direction. So that just means that all these nodes have to move together equally in the x direction. Now what we have to do is just do that again for floor three, four, and five. And we need to be careful to do different constraints for each floor because each floor moves together, but floor two and three need to be able to move independently from each other. So we need to actually define separate constraint rules for each floor. So we do it again, set the equal displacement constraint, call this one floor three. And again, just select translation in the X. If we selected rotation constraints, then that would also make the nodes have to rotate at the same angle, and that's not what the slab is doing. It's only restraining the displacement. So we'll keep going. Select all the nodes at the fourth floor. Do the same thing again. Assign joint constraint. Again, it's an equal constraint being equal displacement. And the constraint is going to be translation in the x. We'll call this one floor 4. And it looks like I accidentally included all of the constraints in there. And let's go back and fix that in a minute. So let's go on and, and finish 5, since I've already started it. And we'll go back and fix floor 4 in a second. 
we'll do the same for 5. An equal constraint for translation in the x. Okay. Okay, so now we're done other than having to go back and flick, fix 4, 4.